What's going on, guys? Welcome to the SUP Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Chris Cheney, and virtually are my two partners in crime here. We have Luke Trevisi. What's going on, buddy? Yo, yo, yo. What's up? And we have my other partner in crime, Lawrence Deloach. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. This is uh, a crazy week for us because there is usually, like, the, the plethora of things that we can cover is, it's um, like, it's just crazy. I'm sorry. I'm, all, I'm a little all flustered here trying to think about the amount of things that we have to talk about. <laughs> we have so much stuff to talk about today. I'm pretty excited, too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess let's tr address the first thing that we've been waiting for arguably years to happen is uh, Kanye West on Joe Rogan. They made it happen, even though all of Joe Rogan's people almost got COVID. Um, his main producer got it, and he canceled the whole week except for Kanye, which I guess was important enough to their team to have in and do the podcast. Uh, man. Lawrence, I know you didn't get a chance to listen to it yet because it's three hours. It's a long time. That's a huge commitment. Um, That's a big ask. Yeah. Uh, me and Luke managed to listen to it. And um, Luke, I don't know what you thought about it. Maybe just give your initial thoughts of what you took away from it. But I mean, this was a crazy ride. Crazy ride. 2020 vision, man. <laughs> I got the 2020 vision. <laughs> hey, I get it. I get it now. Am I going to vote for him? I mean, probably not. That'd be pretty irresponsible right now. But, <laughs> man, do I get it. <laughs> I I'm mean, what, for it, man. So, like, what was your, of out of what you, what, out of what you heard, you know what I mean, that whole interview, um, without giving too much away so Lawrence can enjoy it, maybe others that haven't got a chance to listen to it yet, like, what's the main thing that you enjoyed from it or took away? Um, what do you call it? He's, he was, uh, he was able to kind of paint this picture of, like, kind of this idyllic society that, that he, he's like striving for. And I do, uh, I do appreciate that he has like that kind of goal. I think that's pretty mm. cool. Uh, and that was, uh, that was worth, like, I, would, I was listening to that and I was just like, yeah, that's like all of the stuff that he goes into is, is pretty insane, but it's still like, I understand. It's, it was just good to hear him like kind of articulate all that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the main things that I took away from it was uh, how, like how God is really in every oh, yeah. thing that he does now. Like, and he was very consistent with his, with his not only like thoughts and beliefs, but incorporating God into it and making sure that it was like very Christian forward. Yeah. I haven't heard somebody talk like how he was in a very long time. I mean, I grew up Irish Catholic and I, you know, I went to church every Sunday for a very long time. And like, it was reminiscent of like the priest being like, you know, God, this, God, that, God, that, but also just consistent in his like own thoughts and morals and the way that he was before that he sort of like re re born himself, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it was amazing how, um, he always like kind of went on this whirlwind. What did they call it? Luke? Like a, like a symphony. Yeah. He called it a symphony of thoughts. Yeah. He went on this crazy roller coaster, Lawrence of like thoughts, but, it always started with a question that Joe would ask him and he would, he would always like go on to like seven different topics, but then come back and end on the thing that Joe asked him. Circles. Mm -hmm. He went on circles. Yeah. It's one of those things I want to check. out. I know it's like three hours. And like I said, uh, I, I want before I told you guys, I said, I, I, I want to check it out. I'm going to break it up into like 10 parts, you know, <laughs> and, <Yeah>. and, uh, <laughs> and just see, you know, I, it's, it's going to be very interesting. I, I, it's Kanye. But I do want to uh, check it out. And um, I, will I vote for him? Absolutely not. Uh, I will never vote for him. But I, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, no, being I feel honest. you. Yeah, no, I feel I, you. I will never vote for him. Um, I think he's, you know, he's great at his, what he does. And, and um, there's nothing wrong with branching out because we have had entertainers as uh, president of the United States. But, mm -hmm. you know, also I, I do feel that this position you know it's it's a position that i feel like you do need to be a, a politician yes i don't want i don't want yes. you to just be hey i just made jesus walks in all the lights and then i'm now i'm the president of the united states so um what i will say to that is like i'm not gonna vote for him either um and if he does he was talking about luke right like maybe doing 2024 yeah he was um, saying he, he wanted to do 2024 i'll, I'll keep out I, i'll take that campaign seriously that's what i like so if we get the kanye that joe got like mm -hmm. where he's very articulate and although he may kind of be crazy like he said a lot that made me think you know what i mean so if we get that in 2024 where he, now he has like de developed more thoughts and more time and can like campaign quote unquote more mm -hmm. i will tune into that 
That shit is yeah. great. He said a lot of shit that made me think. Um, just one thing quick, uh, you know, he was talking about how um, a lot of people told him from all walks of life, a lot of people told him he was going to split the black vote. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was sort of like, why, why are you talking about like only black people are going to vote for me? Like, like, you know, and just, it made me think about like different cultures, culture that you need to like uh, sort of, they need to have like a, uh, their own identity. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he said like that word is sort of not going to let racism die because if you differentiate black, which is, you know, culturally, I think that gets taken from the most. Yeah, you're just differentiating people by race, like the, the Asian vote or the, the black vote or the white vote or the, the young vote, you know? Yeah, it was just... Putting everybody in the categories. And not to get too far into it, but it was stuff like that that really made me think where it's just like, I don't know how we can change the language that we use or the category, like the categories that we put people in, but like, yeah, it's very just thought-provoking and it like in a positive light, not in the way that you, we usually see Kanye where he's like, you know, saying some wild shit just because he's trying to get an idea out and it comes off way wrong and now I have to defend him to like 40 people who hate him. <laughs> there you, <laughs> you know go. what I mean? Yeah. I'm very interested in that. Um, it's, man, it's fucking, it's Kanye West, man. It's, it's the guy who, when I was um, young, ger, or young, uh, I used to always, man, just be like, fuck, man, Kanye is, he's, he's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, the guy who is everywhere is Travis Scott. And we, we've discussed that a million times on this podcast. Uh, we've seen all of the endorsements, the collaborations he's done with Nike or McDonald's. Um, what we have coming out in the next couple of weeks is the PlayStation. And on Travis Scott's Instagram, we saw a video a teasing a collaboration or him working uh, with PlayStation. And in the video, we saw uh, Travis Scott PlayStation dunks. Yes. Yeah. What the fuck is going? This dude is everywhere. He is Kevin Hart of like rap. Like he's everywhere. Like everything you see, Travis Scott is somewhere there. That uh, calling him the Kevin Hart is actually a very funny analogy. <laughs> he's he he's when I say he's yeah. Kevin Hart, he's every every like. Like you would see, like it's corporate stuff. Like now, you know, it's like whoever his people are or whoever his management team, it is insane. I mean, to be able to go from Fortnite, and this is all during the pandemic, Fortnite, yeah. McDonald's, PlayStation. Like you, these are huge businesses that Travis's team has got him involved in, and for the guy who people are saying this motherfucker is responsible for the rise of uh, dunk prices and how the hype is gone. I mean, this seems like a pretty big, uh, you know, if it, if it does come out, this is going to be pretty fucking crazy. Yeah. As you can see, it was crazy about, I don't know if you guys saw the that commercial, but like there is one part where like you're just looking at the executives or like, uh, I think it's executives or like the team at Sony and then it pans down mm -hmm. to the shoes because at first you're just like, all right, well, what the hell am I watching here? And then you see the shoes and you're like, on this guy? Mm -hmm. This guy mm -hmm. has him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was a very, it was a very PlayStation ad. It was like weird, like the black and white's very yeah. avant garde. Like PlayStation's always done weird shit, and I think this is just the one of the weirder yeah, things man. that they've done. Not only have they put um, a guy in front of a system in some shoes that weren't that. Like this is a crazy triple label. You have Nike, PlayStation. Yeah. <laughs> so is that Sony? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then Travis Scott. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, look at my man right there. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, These dudes have designs. attitude. Engineering. That Boom. Guy's got, oh. Boom. 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 <sighs> Why do they think they're better than me? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hitting the button. Because oh, they developed the PS5. Okay. So my, my question is, what do you guys think is going to come out of this? Do you think we're going to get a special edition Travis Scott PlayStation? Do you think we're going to get some sneakers? Do you think, what do you think is going to happen? If you could just, if you could just, you know, speculate, what would you think? I think we're getting these shoes, man. I think the shoes were way too prominent in the ad. He knows, he knows his fan base. He knows they're going to want them, you know? Of course they're going to sell them. Well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, if we reflect on what the McDonald's ad was, where they literally had a toy uh, be the main character of the ad and then they right. not come with the toy. But let's not forget the ad came out after we found. Remember, it was a leak. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. We found everything out from a leak. So everybody was speculating that there was a thing. That's true. This is, this is straight from Travis Scott. That's also true. I mean, if, if I mean, my main point, if it's similar to the deal that they constructed with McDonald's, it's just in name and not in anything else. Like the mm-hmm. deal is just like, all right, we're going to have Travis be like, look at this fucking shit here. And then mm-hmm. that's it. I don't know about a special collab. And they're going to get licensed. Tight, no, they'll get licensed to the, he'll probably get licensed to the, the trademark and make a bunch of Sony PlayStation like merch. Oh, merch. Which, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which he has done in the past. I, I, like, let's not forget, like most of, there's like, I think from the Fortnite line and the, the, the Cactus Trails line, even the McDonald's line, there's a lot of stuff that's like inspired by like PlayStation graphics. Mm-hmm. You not know? So I don't feel like this is like, when this came out, I was like, this feels like a good fit for both of them, you know? Like for Sony and for, for Travis Scott. Like this is kind of stuff he's been working with for forever. He just finally has the license. It's, I, ha- I mean, the astronomical, this dude's in space now. You go from what we thought was going to be the peak, at, at least of this year, with McDonald's to then immediately following like within a month almost uh, a PlayStation this dude's on Mars. Like I don't see, like I thought he was done and now he just keeps going up. Mm-hmm. This is just trying to sell albums too. That's the crazy part. I mean, is he trying to sell albums? I mean, he's got like this, he, all of this is in, in conjunction with utopia. Which so, is, like, which is supposed to come on. 2021, but as we've seen in the past with Astroworld and shit, might be 2022. Might be waiting. You know, might be waiting. Might be waiting. Might be waiting. Okay, but still, I've seen like he already dropped some merch from from that, and I think that was in part because he got more eyes on him because of the McDonald's thing. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like a lot of this is like franchise came out as a single first uh, online, and you could buy it before uh, before it was like streamed anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking like a lot of this is just to get eyes on his his tra- his website. So that his like fans will buy more shit from him. It's it's genius. It is. It's really smart, man. It's really smart. I just I if he does something else, I just can't even imagine. Like at this point, you can honestly just like think of the biggest companies and like and then think of a Travis Scott collab, and it kind of like is imaginable because he's done it with well, two yeah. already. Yeah, I mean, we could see. I mean, I could see him doing something with Apple. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah, I but mean, Apple. Apple, but not in the way that we would think of like an artist would work with Apple where you like you go on iTunes and they get the big rollout like Apple, like he gets his own computer. Well, that's what something, something, you know, different. Oh, yeah. that's, if Apple he, has like the Cactus Jack logo, stupid. <laughs> he's he's done. He, I mean, he has figured it out. I mean, people, he's still at, the, you know, probably one of the top rappers, you know, when you start thinking in terms of notoriety, him, Drake, there's not many guys right now that are up there with him you know it's an interesting thought i just have so you guys can call bullshit on me if i'm off um you know you think about like other designers that we follow we'll just use fujiwara just because he's one of my favorite as an example so if you look at the project that fujiwara has has done Mm -hmm. like as a designer they kind of make a lot of sense but he's worked in food he's worked in gaming whatever like he did his own switch he's done things with starbucks whatever then you Mm -hmm. look at travis and it's interesting to kind of parallel like these two people as um as artists but in their own right so you know he's on music side he's on design side but they're doing a lot of similar things but travis is the first guy to kind of like touch the same things that these designer has Mm -hmm. these designers have yeah and be the face of it through rap music Mm -hmm. that's just a crazy thing to think about man like the more i think about what this guy has done with his career and the team that he's had around him helping him build it's like i can't i don't see where he can literally do whatever he wants now like literally whatever he wants and it's fire cabela's outdoor gear and Travis Scott. I'm mm, calling yeah. it. Man can make coals. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's it's insane, man. It's really fucking insane. What's more insane, I mean, is that people they're coming out with shoes based on shoes they they did with Travis, right? Like so I know mochas are not like a new shoe. Mochas are coming out. Right generally more hype than there would ever be around this colorway just because they are the old track they, they're the normal scots <laughs> well that's well that's very interesting because travis is i mean obviously brown this is this is not the first time you know someone's done brown shoes brown sneakers but that has become the color 
that is kind of synonymous with Travis Scott. Almost same thing with Fujiwara. Same thing with Kanye with Solar. Like you know, when we see Solar, you know, black and pink, like it becomes the, it becomes the that's the Kanye color. And Travis is the these are going to be the like you said, if you if you were not able to get the Travis Scotts, the Mochas are going to be your Travis Scotts. And and I honestly I could see these. From a reselling standpoint, these are going to do numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big time. Big, Big time numbers. Big time. Are you, if you do get a pair, uh, do, you, do you buy pink laces? <laughs> do you switch them out? No. Me? No. 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 You don't? But very funny thought. I like that. Funny? It's, uh, it's not really out of the realm. I would do some shit like that. Well, look, so, I mean, I've talked about this before, and I think it's just weird that, like, lookalike shoes are doing well now. Lookalike shoes were mm-hmm. never popping, like, when I first started doing this shit. If you had a shoe that looked like the hot shoe, they'd call you a poser. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'd right. call you other things, but uh, for the sake of They'd call you a poser and be like, yeah, nice try, pal. Uh, but in this case, it's like, if you did that, like what Lawrence, uh, I mean, what Luke is saying, if you switch the pink laces, like, it's... I don't know if it's a fire move, generally speaking, but like it's a move that you can make for sure, and it won't be shit on like it was in the past. No, I did the. I walk around. I wore the uh, the mids. I wear my mids with the neon with the green, green laces. laces. I know you do. Yeah, I know. Mids with ne- neon green laces. I you just look at me and you're like, look, look at this clown. <laughs> He's killing it. He's loving life right now. <laughs> He's got his off off whites. He's chilling. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. You know? Listen, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I mean, I'm excited for these ones. If I don't get them, that's fine. I'm not gonna sit here and, and cry about it. But I, I def- they're a nice shoe. Um, Nike knows what they're doing. They definitely you know cash in on on the hype with you know with Travis Scott. But uh, yeah, it's a dope shoe, man. Wait, let me ask you guys a question now. And we've had a we've had a conversation about like um you know collecting sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. If you're a pure collector, do you get the hot shoe, so like the Travis ones, and then you get all the lookalikes to complete the fake set? <laughs> well, you know, that's that's an interesting thing when you see like, okay, so if we're going to talk about stuff like that, like, for example, like, I know it's a little different, but like, I have the, the off-white Chicago ones, and I also have the Chicago ones. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, so like, when you see that, or like, when you see the... uh the off-white, for example, the off-white fives that are coming out. So, like, mm-hmm. you have the fire red, you know, the white and fire red fives, and then you have the OGs. So, I think, like, you know, when when the, when the you pay homage to the OGs, you know, it, does, that makes the value obviously go up. And that yeah. makes, you know, and I don't, you know, so I, I, it's very interesting because I do, even though the uh, the off-white fives, like, the, I have the fire red fives, I'm getting rid of those. But I do want the off white fives. <laughs> the off white fives are nice. I think, as far as the collection goes, I I think you gotta get them. It's it's better for like, cause I I feel like if you're gonna if you're gonna like a real collector, then you love displaying them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you're putting you put the just like there's different ways you could like shelve it where it's like oh the mm-hmm. middle one is the Travis Scott one, and then mm-hmm. on the other sides are like the spectrum of all the different versions of it, mm-hmm. right? Yo, I love I love when sneakerheads make the sneaker clock. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, I mean, I love it in the way that I hate it. I'm like, yo, you're a clown. You fucking hanging your shoes on a wall to make a clock. But like, that would be funny if you have like the Travis ones, and then it goes all the way to the one that's like furthest away, and then all the way back. That's very all the funny. way back, bro. Mm-hmm. It'd be pretty funny, bro. Like the like Heinekens, like the Lucky Greens that just came out. Uh huh. You got to get those too. <laughs> Just so that it looks good, because it's like, oh look, it's like a baby Heineken, and now it's a grown-up Heineken. Well, mm-hmm. I think I think this is the modern age, like one you stock and one you rock. Someone's like, oh, you got the mochas, but like you know the Trabs are the one. Like, yeah, I got those at home, son. What? Well, that's that's what's also, and and I think people, people in the, like the especially the younger generation, they're so snobby that it's like if they see someone wearing the mochas, it, it then might become well, you couldn't what you couldn't afford the Travis. Like it, that's yeah. how bad things have gotten with this generation go, yep <laughs> and you keep walking and you keep walking it, it's it's such a people are are so snobby when it comes to like stupid shit like this yeah 
Because I think the the mochas are such a they're such a, a nice shoe, and I think people in the long run are going to remember. Remember, we don't really see mocha on a sneaker, on <laughs> Jordan no. especially. And I remember uh, there there's certain colorways of Jordans that I think when they first come out, they are universally kind of disregarded. And I think the Mocha 3s fall into that standpoint where people were, ah. And then when they got a re-release and then things change, people were like, I need the Mochas. Almost similar to like the Olive 9s. Yeah. People were oh. like, oh. Like oh. This, this brownish green colorway, I don't like. I don't the fuck Olive with Olive 9s are the best ones. Yeah. Olive, then Olive 9s become, fuck, they come back out and people are, are fucking camping out for hours. So I'm very intrigued with, with this sneaker. Yeah, the Mocha threes, the yeah threes ones. Uh, yeah, those fours kind of. I guess those fossils right there. Uh, oh, the fossils, yeah. Not a lot of yeah. Damn, I'm oh, so yeah, jealous yeah, yeah. of people that can just own a color. Travis just now owns brown. Yeah, he just owns yeah he owns that Mocha brown, but yeah, yeah, it definitely has become a Travis thing. So we're 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 gonna listen. We're going to take our shots on the Off-White Fives this week on the Sneakers app. We're going to take our shot on the, the Mochas on the Sneakers app. We're, mm-hmm. You know, we're probably going to lose because that's just the way the Sneakers app <laughs> rolls. Just the way it goes, baby. But I was very intrigued on what the Sneakers app, what they're doing now in terms of how it's evolved. Yeah. Uh, it's It's now this really... Even though you come to purchase the sneakers, you know, you also can, right. you know, you can look at, because I, I, you know, I think that's where, that's where it seems like the, the industry or the, the multimedia uh, piece of, of this world is going where you now just watch it on your phone all day. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Like if you yep. just go to an app, you know, we, I, I saw this week that uh, Quibi, Quibi, yeah. mm-hmm. they 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 folded, uh, but they went under. Folded, done, finito, kaput, gazam, done, scram. <laughs> but <laughs> you've been hanging out with Italians too much, man. <laughs> that is that is correct. <laughs> that's correct. Uh, but but yeah, it, it's one. It's that's where the future is going. Where people like you, you watch these videos in these ten-minute clips on your phone, or these five-minute clips. And we saw this week with the sneak, or this last week with the sneakers out, where they debuted. What was it? The the story of the dunk. What was it? What's the title of it? We called it the Dunkumentary. Yeah, the, the Dunkumentary. Dun- <clears throat> yes. And we saw, and you know, it was um, the Dunkumentary was people. Some people were like, I ain't watching this shit. Right. And some people were like, I'm going to watch it because yeah. whatever, for whatever reason. Well, you're and, certainly going to lo- watch it when the app gives you benefits to watch it, right? Well, that's the beautiful thing. And that's where this sneakers app is getting very interesting, where if you watch a certain video and complete it, you may be granted access to, you know, purchase certain sneak purchase, you know, the sneakers mm-hmm. are, again. Mm-hmm. We see it all the time now where, you know, Nike is granting people early access to shoes. They're granting people, you know, they're doing different things, whether it's a sneaker stash where, you know, I mean, granted, it's people are able to spoof locations and get the sneakers earlier. But we are like night. This app is becoming so interactive. Yeah, it's uh, it's trying to keep you like it's very obvious that Nike's trying to keep you on that sneakers app as long as possible now. Like I was telling Lawrence uh, before the show that you could stay on that app for like a good 40 minutes if you just started from like top to bottom, I think, like reading everything. Yeah, if you, if you leave it alone for a week and go back, yes. Right, right, right. I agree. Um, I do think, because they're, they're implementing a lot of like st- strategies that outside of this app we're accustomed to, but we don't think about it in sneakers. So like the information gathering we've spoke mm-hmm. about, um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like the uh, if you play mobile games on your phone, like they always mm-hmm. like watch a video and then you'll get a bone or whatever. So like a lot of good marketing strategies being implemented. Um, I think they'll incorporate a game soon. I think there'll be more things to keep you on there. So they have the Quibi type shows, things like games, all the all that other thing. I bet there'll be a forum. I bet it'll really build it out. They'll try to make like a Nike Talk sort of section. I mean, yeah, it's the smartest thing you can do with this type of thing where people are just cultivated because they want the sneakers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's where, and that's where we're going with this whole app because I mean, once again, now, so when you you do certain, so for example, people who watch the first uh, episode and may have gotten exclusive access to try to purchase dunks. Now, for the people who didn't watch it, now they see that and they're like, "Oh man, maybe I, you know, fuck that. I'm gonna try to, you know, I'm gonna watch this just because something I may not have wanted yeah. to watch." Yeah, you, you know, I was one. I mean, I actually watched it on Friday, the episode two. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Me too. You know, I, I just. So originally when we spoke about this, I didn't know about the benefits of watching. So I, I think I said like I'm gonna binge watch all of them at once because they're only like a quibby whatever. Mm-hmm. But now I can't like so we're programmed to sort of like that's what I do with Netflix shit sometimes or different animes like you know Luke will knows like I'll hit him like yo I watched all twelve episodes of this shit today you gotta watch it. Mm-hmm. But that's going that's like kind of reverting back where like yo make sure you're on top of this shit because you might miss the opportunity. Right. Yep. So I can't even use the normal format that I would watch a show in where I could watch it all at once. It's like all right now I gotta stay on top of the app when is this coming out so I can make sure I get the like the, my size. Really, it's crazy. It's a very smart mm-hmm. strategy. It's actually yeah. kind of annoying that they're. I'm so against this shit. Like, you guys have heard me speak. Like, I'm like, yo, don't give them the info. Like, fuck these yeah. guys. It's free. But now I'm like, I'm gonna be like, all right, I have to concede it a little. Yeah. Did, uh, it's just like with the, uh, with the Last Dance documentary. Like, there's the same exact thing where it's like, oh, if you're watching live, you were able to get access to the Fire Red Fives. And then what else was available? I don't the remember. Flint 13. Yes. The uh, yes, Flint. Right. So yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like you know, this so the sneakers app is just doing these random, yeah, giveaways. Like I I just got exclusive access to these um these Alpha Fly uh, racers. Okay. Uh, they're the they're the runners that the Kenyan dude wore, and he ran in like a marathon in like you know I, I think an hour fifty nine or some shit like that. But my my point is this is how this app works where it's like like you said like they, whether they're giving you exclusive access or whether they're they're doing a sneaker stash or whether they're making you there's some videos remember the scratch videos where you would watch the video and then you would scratch the screen and you would get yep. you know so it's not just an app because i and chris and i and chris said the same thing he remembers when the app was exclusive you needed a password Mm-hmm. You know, I remember. I remember it was All Star Week in 2015, and in New York, and and they were giving out the codes, and and not everyone had them, and and it was. I remember if you used the, the sneakers app, you pretty much were guaranteed to get a pair of whatever was on there because that was the. Wow. And yeah, and it, it it's just and and just to see it go from this app where you spend your money to now they're like, well, this app, you can, you can, some people, you know, people actually upload their, their outfits or they send them video, you know, pictures of them wearing their sneakers and, and, you know, Nike puts it on there. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. So I think, no, so I think I've talked about it before, but you know, you talked about the code or whatever you need to get. So like I went to the uh, premiere, it was in New York on, uh, it was in the Lower East Side or something, but like, yeah. So I, they gave me the, it came with a pair of shoes I got the Bulls over Broadway. They gave it to me because I went, um, which I regret. Because uh, I could have got like De La Soul dunks. I could have got some crazy shit. But the shoes came with this. And this is what I needed to use to open the app and use it. And I, even, I kept the bag and shit. Like, mm-hmm. um, shit was yeah. crazy. I'm just trying to think back to, like, yeah, Ronnie Feig was there. I'm trying to think if there's any notable thing. But he, he took the Bulls over Broadway too, I think. I don't know. It was Great. It was very interesting, and it's evolved much since that moment, for sure. Mm-hmm. Wow. Very cool. It's nice to hear about ancient history. <laughs> five years old. <laughs> but that's what's so funny, because it's like, it's five years old, and it's just like, oh, wow, it's done so much more. Yeah. Like, the app has grown time, in yeah. five years. Now, granted, at the end of the day, there's so you know, people hate this app. You know, you see it all the time. <laughs> people are like, I fucking hate this sneakers app. <laughs> Because, you know, for whatever reason, I just never win, you know, but they still keep people coming back. Yeah, it's true. I mean, did anybody, uh, Lawrence, did you watch the first episode and were you given access to the thing? No. So what happened was I didn't watch until the people started getting access. Mm hmm. So when I saw people getting access, I was like, oh, fuck. And then I, then well, I watched the first episode. Well, buddy, you guys must feel real stupid because your boy got size <laughs> 15 dunks. 
You got size 15? <laughs> yes. Are those real? Really? Those are really size 15? <laughs> what are you going to do with those? <laughs> yeah, it was just for the bit. I'm going to return them, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, sell them. You, yeah. Who's gonna buy? Who's gonna buy my size fifteen dunks? Uh, no, what size is PJ Tucker again? There's definitely a fucking an NBA athlete that will wear those. I have to find somebody. Yeah, let me get a plug now that now that we're we're on that topic. Well, <laughs> I'll throw them on stock for you, and I'll when I, I get the no, PayPal. No, no, no. I've already what? been sit, I've been sitting on this for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody wants these, but we'll see. Well, let's see. I'm, you know, if you look, I mean, the lowest ass is a size 15 uh, for $189. Boom, big money. <laughs> what was the retail uh, on them? $100. And the, the highest bid is 140 Big money. So <laughs> if you were to sell at $140, you would make 100 it, you would come out $123.20. So you would have made $23.20. <laughs> On these sneakers. Yeah, now who's the clown, guys? That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Now who's the clown? <laughs> oh shit! I, uh, uh, I mean, that's in, that's very interesting. So that that's what I'm saying, man. Like, did you <laughs> when did you get those? Did you get those? Uh, so I got the access to it, and <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because like I got the access to to it because I was singing its praises, and the, and because you know Nike listens to us, they were like, <laughs> all right, we'll hook them up with something. And then, so you get access. They say, get on at like 12 o'clock uh, Eastern mm -hmm. time. And there should be like a thing waiting for you. So I go and I check and there's nothing there. 25 minutes pass by and then I finally get access. And then the only thing that's left is a size 15 in the chair. And I was like, well, I feel like a winner today. <laughs> and I bought them. Fuck it. No, I mean, dude, you can. I mean, obviously, you can, you know, make yeah, your, I was like, get if your money they, back, they move, you know, whatever. Maybe I could trade them for something. But if not, I, I can always just return them, you know? That's, no that's loss. so funny. How long I were you wearing those? <laughs> were you wearing those the whole time? No, no, no. For like the oh, past, okay. like, 10 minutes when we first started talking about sneakers. I, I remember I was given exclusive access to the, uh, the off-white uh, Air Max 90s. Uh, the, I was... The oars? The, yeah, Desert Ors. But what, what's interesting was I got access and I'm fucking going crazy trying to get the sneakers. And it's a shit show on the app. Like, it's like, it's kicking me out. It's not, you know, it's like, it's saying access, but there's nothing there. And finally it gets to the point where it's like sold out. You missed your chance, right? And I was like so pissed because I was like, you got to be kidding me. I, I finally get access to something nice and, and I don't get it. And then come to find out, I still won a raffle at Nordstrom. So it worked out. <laughs> but if I had two pairs, then now we're, we're looking at, you know, making a little bit of change. A little cheese for the, for the kid. A little cheese for the mouse, you know? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Zip yeah. zam, boom boom, scram scram. <laughs> zig it a zig it a I swear. Gabagool. Gabagool. Uh, cool. To our listeners, uh, we bet Lawrence that uh, if he couldn't listen to, he can have the Godfather playing while he was going to sleep, and it kind of <laughs> affected him negatively because he was like, "I'm not a bitch." Hey, and now he's like this. Did real quick, I, I, I want to ask you. Did I mean you, you, for those of you, you, Chris, you didn't see episode two yet, right? I have not watched either of them. I'm going to now. I'll, I'll play mm -hmm. catch up, so I'm on top of it. But no, I haven't. I haven't watched anything yet. And Luke, you've watched both. I've watched both, yeah. I find it very interesting. I mean, how we always know how skateboard culture is, mm -hmm. but it's like these guys act like they're fucking God. Yeah. Like man. they, you know, like I, I respect skateboarders. I think that's dope, but like, you know, and I understand being very protective of your, you know, your craft. But like even when Nike was like, well, we were, you know, we Sandy Bodecker and them, they were coming to the skateboarders trying to ask them, and they were like, we don't know if we should let Nike in. Basically, like it was very a lot of distrust, and and I just feel like it's it's so this is the the one culture of the Nike division where it just seems like the way it's been set up, it's just been like snob, 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 snob. And then I watch the fucking video and I see all these owners of these, these skateboarding shops that be fucking backdooring sneakers. I don't know if you peep like KCDCs yeah. and all these other, like, you know, I did see premier, I think the premier owner, if I'm correct, but this is a I mean, topic. 
Y- yes, but just to speak on it for a second, I mean, a lot of fashion today, half of it's hip hop and the other half is skate. And that Venn diagram is very overlapped. A lot mm-hmm. of the skaters listen to hip hop. A lot of the hip hop guys liked what the skaters were doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the one instance where like, Skaters aren't like clean. No, that's not the right word. They're not like well kept. I'll put it that way. Like, yeah, maybe they like all shower and like, you know, maybe they're like clean people, but like they're dirty in the fact that like, you know, they spend two hours trying to like, uh, like kick flip a six stair and they're falling and shit. Like, mm-hmm. shit, it's all fucked up. It was never about like preservation of stuff, You're, like high fashion and like all that shit. It's like, you know, it's pristine, clean or whatever, but we're all about like using the shit. Mm-hmm. So, I yeah. mean, I say we, like, because I came from skate, so that's why I'm trying to speak on it. Like, it's supposed to be our shit. Like, we're supposed to, it's like our shit to fuck up. And you guys saying, not you two specifically, but, like, the world is coming in and looking at what we're doing and, like, taking our shit and then going over to Paris and, like, doing it on a runway. So that's right. why there's that backdoor shit. I mean, talking with my skate friends that, like, you know, about when the Grateful Dead's came out and, like, this whole dunk thing, and they do backdoor currently, you know what I mean? Like, some of the skate shops that we're familiar with now are doing it, and it's just because mm. they're still on the same shit. We're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. This is our shit. We did yeah. this, not you. Well, we, we've always talked about, you know, and why a lot of the shit gets backdoored and, you know, the way yeah. it's set up, these skate shops, you know, they got to take on all this garbage, and then they get some hot shit that, and then it becomes, oh, you know, they got to pay bills, too. And I've, I've always said that, that that's uh, oh, yeah. understandable. So always, always. But always. yeah, they're always like they're always like not our shit. Right. Mm-hmm. It's theirs. It's theirs. They act like it, at least. Uh, but yeah, I think it, 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 what, what Chris said was important, too, because he was saying in a park, just learning how to do a, a trick. Mm-hmm. It's just for them, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just like, who's that for? That's like, there, there was no lane back in, back in the day for like a professional skateboarding career, you know? Mm-hmm. That was just an idea. And it was just, the people were just getting good at tricks for the sake of getting good at them. So I understand. Yeah, I remember there was, um, <clears throat> there was a skate shop called Concrete Wave that was like by my high school that had the only skate shop in the town. And we would go, and the owner, who was also like a skater, he like knew your size. He knew like everything about you. So when you pulled up, you know, he was just like, what do you need? And like, you just like point and he already had the shoe in front. Like it was that kind of community. But when like, when a mom came in with like her young kids, the dude was like, what the fuck are you here for? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. It was just cause the kid knew that skate was hot. She didn't want to go to pack sun. Like she didn't want to go to the mall. This place mm-hmm. was right down the street. You know what I mean? It's like the kid that like, when he starts skateboarding, he buys the full set, like the shit already mm-hmm. together. That's yeah. when we're like, Oh, this is bad. But that, that's just mm-hmm. to speak on. You know what I mean? Uh, Excuse me. What was I going to ask you? Oh, did you see uh, Tenant, what Tenant did last week? Oh, yeah. They had like a best trick competition. They had a, uh, like they had a best trick competition in the park. Uh, it was sponsored by Bronze 56K, too, because they, uh, I think what was happening was like they were putting it, they were, Bronze was installing a new railing mm-hmm. for them to grind. So it was like, all right, in celebration, Chris put a fucking, he put a fucking uh, bronze phone posit on a fucking plaque and said, best fucking trick. Oh, yeah. So the, 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 the thing that you won, the trophy, was a kid. Hennessy bottles. <laughs> yeah, and like 500 bucks. Yo, 500. The, yo, I, yo, shout out to Chris. Shout out to Jesse. Shout out to Tenet. All those guys. Those are my fucking guys right there. They're, they're, they're fucking crazy. I love them. It's hilarious. Um, we talked about, we're talking about like skateboarding, dunk, skate, all this shit, man. And. I'm still laughing every day about uh, Nike's lawsuit against Warren Lotus. I'm just <laughs> laughing. Like, I just think it's so fucking funny to me. That Yo, they are curb stomping this dude. Yeah. Rightfully so. Yeah, man. Rightfully I so. so. Um, I mean, and we've already beaten this, like, you know, uh, fake, not fake, bootleg, designer, mm-hmm. fit, like, whatever. We've beaten this into the ground. Mm-hmm. Um. Every day, though, I will say I kind of flip-flop. You know how I, I turned on the union where I hated it at first and now I love it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do that, like, every other day with this shit, though, because, like, being an artist, I'm like, yo, I want to, like, like with Lotus. I want to be with him. I want to, like, mm-hmm. be on the side of creatives. Right. But then, like, but then I look at Nike's reasoning and the shit. I'm like, damn, bro, you're fucked. You're so mm-hmm. fucked. I know. He's so <laughs> gonna fucked. are going to take everything from you. Right? Isn't it, like, 
when I saw that interview, when I like was looking into him and I was like reading the interviews, I was like, okay, I kind of understand where he's coming from as an artist. But mm-hmm. then I saw his fucking face and I was like, I got to support this guy. Mm-hmm. And then slowly but surely more and more shit comes out. And you're just like, fuck, this is not the guy, you mm-hmm. know, they're taking this guy down as an example for the rest of these guys, which yeah. is what's a little scary, which is scary for, uh, for, uh, I think for the culture, because I think ideally, I, I'm, I'm, I've, you know, I've stated in the past that I'm very pro the idea of if the if this is not really on the market, if it's not truly on the market where somebody could pick it up off a shelf and pay a retail price for it, if it's not decided by a secondary market, then I think you should be able to like you should be able to make them, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. uh, just on principle of like, dude, if you want to kill resale, this is the on- this is one of the only ways I can see it physically happening, you know. So there's a couple of things, <clears throat> a couple of things since that we've, we've spoke that I've had thoughts out. It's uh, number one, the wording was terrible. Replica, dunk, mm-hmm. all things you can't use. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. Right. If mm-hmm. you sell anything as art though. Right. You can't get in trouble for selling art. Right. Mm-hmm. He also was saying that everything he did was original and not on the market, which is absolutely not true, dude. Based on, the, again, the verbiage and then also the visual, it's completely different. You can't do that. Right. One thing, because we spoke about the Ari Menthols before, and he actually did an interview recently where I liked something he said. He never claimed that he designed a shoe. He said he designed a concept mm-hmm. that then which could be distributed and sold as art. <clears throat> he was like, I didn't design the Air Force One. I didn't design the Babesta. I, I never had anything to do with these. That was a canvas for a conceptual statement that I then sold. That right. is the way to do it. And that's the the purity and the honesty coming from the guy who set this whole thing off. Mm-hmm. These other guys who are just making like the, like, we, bro, we know, all right, we don't care that you made it in the St. Laurent factory. We don't care about, you know, your story or whatever, bro. You ripped off some dunks and you're getting punished for it. Unfortunately, that's the case. Like you, you fucked up along the way. I would just pack up your shit and go home. Well, yes. Yeah, well, it's not only just packing up, but I mean, he's, you know, they, they want him to stop, uh, you know, stop manufacturing, stop production, mm-hmm. like all these, you know, he's the money, a lot of money being lost right now for him. I so know. yeah, I fucking money. Conceptually. I was so with him. Cause he was picking like the, the dunks that no one could get. Like we talk, I mean, back to the previous conversation, like right. he was conceptually doing the right thing as far as the things he was picking. It's just execution was so poor mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> or not even poor. I guess it was too good because that's how he's getting sued. Mm hmm. It's true. It's true. And it's like the fact that you still kind of use the swoosh is like another killer. Like that's another thing in the coffin because now you're fucking with the trademark. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all it's it's big old mess. Yeah. Um, You know, speaking of another mess, uh, you know, we said last week we were going to watch the Netflix uh, sneaker head show. Yeah. Um, I could only get through the first episode and I was like, yo, I'm not watching the rest of the shit. This shit was the worst show. <laughs> this is the worst show that has ever been made, it's, I think. It's so bad. All oh my God. Stuff. Um, <laughs> so wait, w- just a temperature check on you guys. Where, where are you in the series? Did you guys watch the third episode or? I haven't watched another mm-hmm. episode of it. Bro, I do I not blame you at all. Two. You finished finish episode, episode two. two. That's it. Um, hold on. I have notes somewhere. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so Lawrence, what did you said? You only watched the first one? First two. First two. Okay. So I haven't seen the other two episodes that are out. Um, are there any other shoes other than Jordan's Adidas and Tom's? No, well, I, 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 I will say this and, and, and I'm going to say this. I think the, the sneaker that was the first thing that people opened up was an iconic shoe. I'm going to give them that the Jordan four, the cement. Yes. Yes. Iconic. So it's, it's kind of easier for the, the viewer. I mean, they did, you know, they did bring up certain, you know, they brought up the Yeezy, the Nike Yeezys. They brought up the off white, you know, ones. There are certain sneakers in that series that yes, they're not bad at all, but I think the delivery within the show is, it's not there. And I think the characters are just unlikable. Yeah. I mean, not only they did one thing, right. So they were trying, I think what they were trying to do is they were trying to like sell uh, Seinfeld it where they mm-hmm. were going to do like observational humor. Cause like the nod, mm-hmm. they talked about yeah. what the nod kind of is. They sort of went into it. 
which mm-hmm. that is that's a great topic. That's a great joke you can have. It can be a constant thing throughout the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they only mentioned it once, and as he, you know, they discuss the nod. The guy pulls up on this place called Unbeaten, which, which you're is like, like undefeated. undefeated. You're like, Yo, yeah. you couldn't come up with a better name for the store than yeah. Unbeaten. If I was undefeated, I would. De- and it like had the like a logo that looked just like the undefeated logo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> also. I'm not letting them get off with the backpacks being worn as an accessory. So, like, King Bach is wearing it in the, his uh, Foot Locker uniform. He's wearing a blue Adidas backpack. And then mm-hmm. the Asian hype beast, which also, like, I don't know if it's cool how stereotypical they made some of these characters. Like, they're getting away I'm with a lot. Cool with, mm-hmm. I'm not cool with how accurate that kid was. Yeah, Asian. he's like he's like your boy Chris. That's pure and pure what Chris is right there. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's the king. <laughs> But bro, all right. So not that uh, again. I have no issue with this. I just don't know how they're gonna get. They're getting away with this in 2020. But they made the white dude a super loser, which I totally get. Yeah, that's fine. Make the white kid like pay to hang out with the black dudes. Okay, I understand that. He he offered them money to hang out. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty crazy. That was pretty. I know. <laughs> that's pretty cringy, man. I was like, yo. I mean, there's mm-hmm. definitely a dude that will do that. But this, I was like, watch this. I have no idea how to speak for this. And then the Asian dude being that Asian is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that flavor of Asian to the po- to that point. Like I know, I know, I'm holding a supreme microphone while I'm saying this, but you know, <laughs> I don't want to be. Ex- I don't want to feel exposed. No, I feel you. I'm with you on that. It's it's man, it was it's a lot, you know. But that that's what, and this is what's interesting, oh. man. It, we we have people that want to, you know, they want to uh, watch, you know, they want in on this culture and. It just is what it is, man. The casual had a video somebody posted in the Discord, which, by the way, if you aren't in the Discord, uh, links in the bio. Get get mm-hmm. in on that. Yep. Uh, but uh, sketchy Mike in the Discord dropped the casual the casuals mm-hmm. review of the show, and he hit a lot of the same points that we were basically hitting on, where it's like the only shoes in the show are like mm-hmm. the super hype beast shoes. Like, show me a guy who's obsessed with pumps. I know a person that exists. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly you know uh it's like you know just show me like different types of people don't show me like these are just these are resellers this isn't a sneaker head show this is a reseller show mm-hmm. yeah where's the dad guy where's the dad shoe guy yeah where's the dad shoe guy who like he's got like nice pieces and like the crusty dad shoes mm-hmm. you know where's that guy <clears throat> uh where's where's the ewing guy where's the ewing guy where's the fucking ewing guy mm-hmm. luke you know there's no Ewing guy other than you. So don't, don't, don't you dare do that. You're the only Ewing guy. It's me and ASAP Ferg. <laughs> no, it. he's doing it as a bit. You're serious. No. Oh, the, the rapper's doing it as a bit. The comedian's doing it for serious. Yes. <laughs> um, I really wish it, we weren't in a global pandemic right now because I would seriously try to get you guys to write a sitcom with me about sneakers. You don't need to be. <laughs> nah, that's, we, we don't do need any. to be in the same room. We can all do it on here. When are, how are we gonna film it? I, I like. I'm saying like we oh, gotta film it. Yeah. Yeah, we could write it. We could write it and write it. sell it. Yeah. I mean, like, I haven't seen um uh, who is it? Lisa Waith. I said that right. Yeah, Lisa Waith. She has that Lena, shit. That was, Lena, Lena Waith. Yeah. So she had that shit on Quibi that tanked. Right. I don't know if anyone watched that shit. So that's already at the door. <laughs> I mean, we have an opportunity here, guys. And you know, listen, Nike's listening. So, mm-hmm. listen, if Nike, if you want to buy something from us, if you want to help, we haven't read it yet, but you could hire us. You could hire us. You could, you could, you could hire us off the strength of this podcast alone. I just emailed the Sultans, baby. Consultant. <laughs> look, I'm gonna look right in the camera. Nike, come on, do the right thing. Hi, mm-hmm. Hire your boys. Hire your boys here. We could be sub podcast, more like Nike talk. Mm-hmm. That's us now. <laughs> Sub talk, baby. Sub talk, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Nike talks up. <laughs> Yo, it's the worst show it's ever. All right, look, look. Do it's we really... do we have to finish it? Do you want to keep doing this? Because I will come on here every week and trash one episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm down uh, to do that. I'm down yeah. to watch another episode. I mean, okay. I, I gotta watch. So next week we're gonna do episode two. Um, then we'll do three. And all right, so every week we gotta. All right, new segment. New segment, guys. Here. We- Trash. This is like the reverse of the last dance. Everybody thought the last <laughs> dance was amazing. Everybody in this group is in complete consensus. Sneakerheads sucks. Trash. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, not good. <sighs> Man. We'll keep watching. There's six episodes. That's a lot of episodes. <laughs> That's a lot to get through. Yes, it is. We got six weeks, of- baby. Five weeks now. Five weeks. Mm-hmm. Plenty Look forward to this incredible breakdown. <laughs> yeah, we we should definitely watch another episode and keep going and keep going. Like, <laughs> yeah, this I'm is the first to, time Lawrence has been down for one Lawrence of our dumb down ideas. For a bit. <laughs> I'm, down, I'm down to watch episode three this week. So let me know. Oh, wait. So do you should I catch up to three? Because I only watched one. I two next so, week. So Luke, you watched the first two, right? I watched the first two. You watched yeah. the first two, Lawrence. And then Chris has only watched one. So now what, you know what? Fuck Chris. We had to watch two episodes on our own volition. We, I, you, I asked you guys to. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't that, follow. No, the that's fine. I'll watch two for the next week. He's got to watch two in a row. Yeah, that's watch, watch up. two. Get catch up. So listen, next episode, let's catch. Let's get to the third episode. Okay. We'll talk about, the, we'll, talk about we'll pepper in the second episode, but we'll ma- mainly talk about the third. Oh, right, that's fine. I mean, I'm probably gonna watch the second one on Monday, so by like Friday, I'm recouped mm-hmm. <laughs> and ready to. <laughs> Bro, I just I also want to know that website that he had open when he first saw the cement fours were coming out. Like, what yeah. website was, what was that? It? What was it? Yeah, so it just was like cement four is out today. <laughs> like, there was nothing. You had I mean, so many websites that you could have played I, off of. That 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 stuff I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock, but there's just so That's much shit <laughs> on, on in this in this series that I'm just knocking. Just also, yo, just I gotta this. I gotta hit Chris now. To Vidal to see what part he thought like of his life was in there because like if he's King Bach like yo I'd be so tight. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean let's let's watch the whole series first before right. you ask him because there okay, may be well. other shit in there. So that's true. That's true. That's true. Um. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think we uh. Think we, got we, got through, we we got through a lot this week. I, we I, did go through a lot. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want the listeners to feel like this is you know the Joe Rogan experience. You know, <laughs> I don't want a three-hour episode. No. Um. I mean, so just some things that we didn't get to that I want to talk like not talk about, but just say I'm gonna keep, keep my, my eye out. Is uh, Adidas is trying to sell Reebok, which. Mm-hmm. You know, Reebok is whatever to most people, but this is still a one of the top five major shoe companies in the being available in the market to be purchased. Yeah, how much? How many asking? Uh, I don't know the asking. I mean, all the resources that I've seen, I haven't asked anybody at Reebok, by the way, because I know they don't. They're not in the inside like that. Yeah. But I mean, like, you got a whole company that who knows where the fuck they're going. I could ask Frank, probably. I mean, he's still over there, but yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm it's just, just saying if we put like. Six billion together each. Like if everybody puts in two <laughs> two bills each, we could we could have a Reebok. All right. I know I'm being a little greedy because I just said the Nike thing, but come on, guys. Well, Let's look if you th- if you think about it, like Adidas buying Reebok was crazy in the first place. But now that, I mean, think about all the other companies that exist. They could be mm-hmm. purchased by anybody. So it's very important that we watch and see, yeah. especially now because mm-hmm. yes. I don't like look at what they've been doing over the past like five years they've they've really like kind of hit like a nice stride i think mm-hmm. no reebok was they made a mistake going after like crossfit and like tough mutter and all that fitness shit like that wasn't their space like you had to compete with too many other people and you weren't the brand for that their legacy was basketball and in vintage runners which is you know mm-hmm. like nike's and adidas's spot whatever mm-hmm. but if they get bought by say like i mean i'll say it leaning so say you get by one of these asian companies where like pump fury that whole market Oh, that Asians love, you know, like mm-hmm. there's so many mm-hmm. possibilities. So the, all I'm saying is not to get into it too much, but I want to pay attention to that because that means Absolutely. a lot. This is a top yeah. five company available for, to be purchased by another one. <clears throat> Discord, maybe throwing a couple of bucks too. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> couple of bucks, you know, we could make the we could make this deal. <laughs> oh God. Um. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's the else? only thing I wanted to say before we uh got out of here. Um, that that is a big uh-huh. one. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I mean, Shaq in the past uh, was like, Sakai I want to buy Reebok, waffles. whatever. Oh, yes, true. Are we Right. Sakai Vapor Waffles, we got some close looks at those. Take a look at them uh, on your own free time. We can, talk, sure we'll, we can discuss that the next episode because sure. uh, those uh, come out, uh, I think, sometime like first or second week in November. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, Jeremy Lin has a, a signature shoe. That's not really important to anybody. That's just a little Asian <laughs> history for you. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, I think that's about um, it. I think that's about. Wait, Luke, can I t- uh, can I tell Lawrence the story of what I did to you for your birthday party? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we yeah, really yeah, talking so, about it on the podcast, or are we going? Yeah, yeah, no, I would talk about on the podcast. Um, because I texted you about it, but you hit me like late. I don't. You probably weren't looking at your phone or whatever. 
So Luke's girlfriend threw a surprise birthday for him. Um, and I go there. I'm like mad early or whatever. So uh, we're like, Luke has no idea this is happening, by the way. I don't know how she got it. So Luke had no idea. No, I had no idea whatsoever. Her, his mom even made like, like this like whole like catered food thing. It was crazy. Anyway, so I'm waiting at Luke's girlfriend's house for him to come, right? And she says that he's in the Uber. And I was like, all right, what's the most ridiculous thing I could say that Luke would believe to get him mad that he's coming to his girlfriend's house for the surprise party? <laughs> mm-hmm. So I hit him and I'm like, yo, bro, I, I got invited to a Louis Vuitton uh, release party. Uh, do you want, I got it to bring somebody. Do you want to come? And like, although it's a ridiculous idea that I could get invited to that, it's like, it's, it is in the realm of possibility. Like, cause I've been at parties where I should not have been at at all. It's, it's like, here's what I was thinking immediately. Trey backed out on it. Somebody else backed <laughs> out on it on Trey. And Chris just was standing in the corner at the time, at the exact moment. That's what I thought had happened. Bro, that's how I got all my invites to anything. I thought the moon had shifted <laughs> into the podcast's favor because that's immediately what I was thinking. I was like, I want to meet all of these people and try to get them all as guests on our podcast. <laughs> yo, so I said, I was like, all right. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I don't know what this is going on. He's like, yo, talk to Virgil. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if I'm even going to see him. This is like this crazy thing. And, I, and then I pretend to get an email where I'm like, oh, shit. It's saying he's supposed to debut his new 10. <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, why would Louis? I'm typing this out like kind of like as a, it's like a stream of consciousness. I'm like, like why would? Thinking, I'm like, why already would? the first sign, honestly. Chris <laughs> doesn't like, think when he texts. <laughs> I'm like, why would Louis Vuitton have a party for <laughs> Virgil's new 10? And I'm like, oh shit, they're all gonna be Louis Vuitton shoes. <laughs> this motherfucker. Here's the words. I was like, oh, I would wear my off-white dunks. You should invite Lawrence. Like, it's fine. It's like, I'm just go- I'm going to my girlfriend's stupid party. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I said funny. that you said you could go and you were going to wear your Jaspers. <laughs> Yo, this uh, is so I was like, good funny. call, good call. <laughs> and, then, and then here's the best part. When he sent me that, like, last string of stuff, I was already at my girlfriend's place. And I was meeting her mom for the first time I might have. <laughs> I had pink dye in my hair. <laughs> And a crown on my head. And I had to meet this woman and say, hello, I'm, I'm your daughter's boyfriend. Like, already. And then this is happening in the corner. And I'm just looking at my oh. phone. And she goes, what's wrong? And I'm like, Virgil's debuting his new 10 maybe tonight. <laughs> that's hilarious, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I'm here. But that's okay. I'm happy to be here. But, like, you know, maybe like Chris could get somebody. <laughs> oh... That oh, was, but it so was a good, good roller coaster. I enjoyed it. Hilarious. Was, thank you for for coming, Chris Lawrence. I knew you, uh, you, you couldn't make it, but that's okay. I appreciate you anyway. Uh, my girlfriend said you sent your regards. Yes. Thank you. Um. All right. Let's uh, hypeless heat and get the fuck out of here. How does that sound? It sounds cool. good. <clears throat> um. Does anyone want to go first, or I can kick it off? However, you guys want to do buddy. it. You- <clears throat> All right, I'll kick it off. Um, you kick it off. I'm going to try to... Yeah. My Wi-Fi is garbage right now, so I'm not even going to try to pull it up. But I was going to end Boktober um, with mm-hmm. the Kamikaze 2, yeah, which is also... Week. That's right. <clears throat> yep, this is the last one. So to end off Boktober with my hypo seat, I want to do the Kamikaze 2. It's getting retroed again. Um, and I think this is just a really underappreciated basketball show, just generally speaking. Like, it kind of was one of the first ones along with the Shaq Gnosis to sort of incorporate the soul along with the upper in the design so that they like squiggle. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a, a normal now, <clears throat> but back then that was one of the first ones to kind of like do that. The first Kamikaze like didn't get all the love it should. The second one was a banger with Kemp being the guy wearing it, doing all the shit he was doing. Like that is that shoe is cemented in time where, you know, it's going back to like Reebok being sold. Like that is a priceless moment that is worth more to the sneaker culture mm-hmm. than most other moments are. So I just wanted mm-hmm. to end my Boktober. That's probably my favorite uh, Reebok basketball shoe. I'll just do that. I mean, besides the pumps, but non-pump basketball, that's my, that's my choice right there. That's your choice. Hmm. Lawrence, you got one? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to go with the uh, classic Air Max 95 neon green. I think they're, they come out so many times. Can we classify that as, as hypeless? Or is is yeah, there a well, hype you know, behind? Well, you know what? I think, I think it's more just 
pointing out some, some some like things that have gotten forgotten or do they don't get enough light like you know originally like we say hype plus heat like well let's point out things that don't have hype but no i mean like mm-hmm. some things mm-hmm. have hype they go away like we got to remind the people that these shoes exist so mm-hmm. you know i picked okay. the twos which have a lot of heat um so 95s have a lot of heat but i mean those are classics okay so then yeah so then i'm gonna go neon green uh air max 95s Ooh. I had those when I was a kid. Uh, I had them multiple times as an adult. Never really had a tough time getting them. Uh, but every time I wore them, you know, people always uh, fucking loved them. Sure. That's true. Uh, fuck. Uh, I guess, I don't know, man. I have, uh, I've been trying to figure one out. I, I've been having a, having a tough time. Uh, I guess I would pick uh, something that... No, I I want to do human races, the blood orange ones that just came out. Mm-hmm. But like I feel like those got no love whatsoever and they're just like a kind of a interesting colorway as far as like human races go and they're uh because nobody's really paying attention to them, like you could own a pair of human races for like a decent for like pretty much retail price on on re- uh resale apps right now. So, okay. No, I'm with that. Yeah, go with that. There you go. go with that, buddy. Um, yeah, no, there's a four. Yeah. Those are, I mean, yeah. four. These are three great picks from three different companies um, that mm-hmm. all have a moment that no one can take away from them. So that, that's the point of the segment. You know what I mean? It's like people sleep on some of this shit. Like, there's no need to sleep on it if you like them, buy them. That's the whole point. There you <clears> go. Um, but all right. So wrap this up. You know, go onto the Instagram. Um, there's an email and a phone number attached to it. So you can leave us a voicemail or text us guys. I keep telling you, I'm not going to play the fucked up shit. You send me, I'm still not going to, but I mean, please do still do it. Cause it's funny for me to listen to. Can you, um, can you share it with us too? I mean, come on, man. Like we're not going to, not here, not live. Yeah. All right. Like, next time I get a really good one, I'll share it with you guys. It's, it's usually just nonsense yeah. to be honest. It's like half the time it doesn't even make any sense. So it's not worth sharing. But like when I get a good one, I will share it. Gotcha. Please do. Um, and then, you know, so the discord, of course, um, go to the Discord, join there. Um, but you could also follow all of us. I'm at not that Cheney on Instagram, all socials. Uh, Trovisus, uh, LZD three two five. Um, and the Discord's the main thing, man. The Discord keeps growing. We got more and more people in there, more and more discussions happening each day. Um, more activity, and then um, people from other Discords. I've tried to mention that like there's plenty of Discords you could join based on brand. There's a hype beast one. There's each mm. blog has its own one. Like there's plenty of communities that we could sort of intermingle and join in. Um, and it's just really a great community. It's like live Nike talk, pretty much. That's the way I'll describe it. There you go. Um, and that's it guys. So, um, do all that and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.